Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this bauble card. I shared this one on my blog the other day and this is the one that I did this morning. Um, when I shared that one I was asked if I'd do a video to show how I did it, which I'm always very happy to do. Um, and I always make another card immediately before a video just to remind myself of the process and anything quirky that I need to remember to tell you. Quite often, like in the case of this one, I find an easier way to do something and that applies to the ball ball. Um, and I've also added that one onto dimensionals, which that wasn't, and this definitely looks a lot nicer. And the only change I've made onto the sentiment is I've put little white dots in the little scallops there. So this is the one I'm going to be doing now and I will change my colour scheme and I'm going to be using soft sea foam. So the card pieces that you're going to be needing, you need a card base in whisper white which measures eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches, scored and folded at four and one eighth, which is 21 by 14.5 centimetres, scored and folded at 10.5. And then you need two pieces of soft seam foam and that should measure three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches which is 9.7 by 13.8 centimeters and then two pieces of whisper white which are three and three quarter inches by five and three eighths inches which is 9.4 by 13.5 so you've got two of these for the front and two of them for the inside you also need a piece of silver foil which is the same size as this which is three and three quarter inches by five and three eighths or 9.4 by oh, that's clever 13.5 uh, centimeters okay so that's 9.4 by 13.5 centimeters but this needs to be a tad smaller than this so I just put this into my guillotine and cut two absolute tads off and I've saved them so you can see how tiny they are okay that's less than one sixteenth of an inch um, I don't know how that equates with um, uh, centimeters but you can see how very very thin that is and the reason is because this is going to be adhered behind the die cut there and it's not going to be seen coming out anywhere um, I did think about doing it so that it only came down to about here to just save a bit of the foil but then you'd have a bump going down there. If you wanted to use a smaller piece like that I would suggest that maybe put a piece of ribbon around so that the bump wouldn't be noticeable. Um, but I'm using a complete piece and you will see if I can line this up it really is just a tad smaller. Sorry, I'm trying to not tilt that so it shines at you. Okay, so that really is. And the reason is when it gets adhered onto that one, and I use my tear and tape, when I put my tear and tape on there, it's not going to touch on here. So I've got to. Um, do something extra to make sure that one doesn't come falling off of there. It probably doesn't make any sense at all but I know what I'm saying. Right I'm going to start off with my heat embossing first. Oh no I didn't tell you these bits did I? All right these are approximate. Two pieces of soft sea foam which measure three by three inches which is seven by five no sorry seven point five by seven point five centimeters and that one's one and a half inches by two and a half inches which is four by 6.5 centimeters. So I'm going to do these first. So I'll start with my embossing buddy and go over all three pieces. This will remove any static or any greasy fingerprints. Now the stamp set that I'm using and the um, dies are The stamp set is beautiful baubles and I'm going to be using this one and this 
and this I didn't show you inside did I what I did was I also did that one there and on this one I die cut all six and put them in there and on this one I just put three in there as you can see I do play around when I do things like this um, and the dies are the dies that go with this set which are called detailed baubles and I will be using this one because I want my die the die cut to stay on my sheet on my layer like that if I wanted to cut that out like a complete sort of doily I would use that one as well and that's what would cut it out so I'm going to have that and I'm going to have that and while I'm do talking about dies I'm also going to be using this one which is the size number one of the layering ovals the scallop okay that's for the sentiment so they're the bits I'm using. They will be the dies. Right, let's get all the dies together and the stamps and Versamark. So first of all I'm going to do this one. Just do that in the centre. good. Oh, I've got a torn bit of my cardstock now. I don't know where that came from. Right, okay. Now this one. Just going to do this right in the centre. center on this one it's in the center to make sure I get it all on whereas the other ones are to make sure I leave enough room for the die to cut around them okay so that's good so let's put that away and that can go up that end and now I need my white embossing powder. Um, that's it. Let's give that an extra flick. So that looks good. And this one. That's it, an extra flick and the sentiment. heat embossing now and I'm going to let my um, heat tool warm up a bit before I actually start the embossing so bear with me it will be a little bit noisy but not too noisy right where are we
not sure that's taken very well. That has. taken very well. Now that one I think I'm going to quickly just redo that because that hasn't taken at all. So bear with me while I get a scrap of paper to... Oh where's my folder gone? Oh here it is. Yeah that will be wide enough. I don't know quite what happened there. Let's bring this back. Maybe I didn't put enough um, versa mark on it. Because I took the stamp to the versa mark, didn't I, rather than the versa mark to the stamp. And I know there's nothing wrong with the stamp because this is the third one I'm doing. Now that looks a lot better. Right, let's close that one up first. And bring this back over again. Much better. Just heat that one. So bear with me again. Much, much better. Have I done far enough? I don't think I did the end of that M. have done now. Right, so let's get rid of that one. So, we now need to do our big shot. Let's just clear a space here. Okay, let me get rid of these little tads of silver strips I cut off. I don't need that now. Right. I am going to die cut the what I call doily, which is this bit here, and that's, turn that over. And that's going to be from this piece here. So what I'm doing is I like to have that flat piece up at the top, which means I get flat bits at the side. Okay, so this just about fits on, and I just leave a little gap up there so I've got enough room down here for my um, sentiment. Let me just cut those bits off and then I can put that on here as well. And for this what I do is I just bring the die down a bit lower. I don't try and get it in the centre, I do it a little bit lower so that I've got the room here because I like to put the uh, rhinestones at the bottom. So that is a lot closer to the top there. Okay, so that's for those two. In fact, I should have done the other ones first, shouldn't I? Never mind. So that's the sentiment. 
Now this one, the centre gets cut out, so that will be saved for something else. This I'm not trying to get out at the moment because I need to do something else to that, which is part of the technique for this card. Now I'm just going to cut these two out. No, that's fussy cutting that one. It was just, when I did use a die for it, it was just um, a circle die, which is why it cut the top bit off. Right, so that's all I need after that, isn't it? For die cutting. Okay, so these little bits pop out as easy as anything. There we go. Now, the other thing that I'm going to be doing with this one here is I'm going to use my embossing mats. Now I've done this one ahead of time and this is just a straightforward cut which is what that one which is what this one looks like if I could show you underneath okay so once I've been through the embossing mats with this one I can show you the two together so you can see what a difference this makes right so what you need with the embossing mats you need just the normal platform and when you buy the plat uh, the embossing mats, you get this. And inside, you get a thick rubber mat, embossing mat, I think they're calling this. And they do a very floppy blue embossing mat and this rigid top plate. On the inside here, it gives you the pictures of what you need for each of the um, sandwiches and that's your straight, straightforward sandwich which is what I've done already on that one. I'm now going to do this one which is um, the cut and emboss but I've done my cutting already and that one is emboss only so it tells you up here what the bits are that you sorry it tells you here what the bits are okay so all these numbers match up with the numbers here I used this for the first time the other day and I am just so totally in love with these embossing folders they are gorgeous so I've got my platform I take one cutting mat I take my cut uh, piece of paper my die cut piece of paper and then I need the grey embossing mat and you must have this with your die facing up the the cutting part of your die facing up and then you have that and then you have the white piece and although I've only been doing this for since the last video which was um, so I would have been doing it Friday I've only been using this for about four or five days but already I know what my sandwich is it's a bit like you get used to the normal sandwich and the second one is quite normal for me now as well so let me just move the bits out of the way then I can get the big shot out of the way then I can show you this Let's move all the mats out of the way. So they can go there. And they can go there. And get rid of those as well. Do like a nice clear desk. I'm going to use my uh, dye brush and the mat just to try and get most of these bits out. They come out very, very easily. Um, if I wasn't doing a video, I would just take the dye off and I would use my uh, 
piercing tool just to get all the bits out um, but that's just my laziness but as you can see I think that's got all the bits out yep there we go see and there might be some bits on there too so I will do that later right now I want to show you the difference between this with the embossing mats and that without um, what can I use that's nice and dark let's use this there we go okay so the one on the right is the one that's been embossed I hope this is going to work you'll see that it is most noticeable on the bits in between rather than just the straight lines although in fact you'll see that already can't you isn't that amazing? Now I would never have thought that would have worked. I would have thought that the die facing up would have cut through the rubber mats, but it doesn't. It's really lovely. So if you've been sitting on the fence about buying the embossing mats, go for it. You will not be disappointed, trust me. I will try and do a few more uh, projects on my blog using um, this this embossing thingy. Right now this one I've got to fussy cut. Now the advantage of fussy cutting is that I don't lose the cap to the bauble and all I am trying to do is go round the edge and I'm leaving I don't know possibly about a sixteenth of an inch green round there. And I know this will fit in the circle of the uh, doily that I've done. And I want it to fit in, but I don't want it to come over the edges. Whoops. Don't talk. Right, then when I come to the cap, I'm going to go upwards and then curve around the corner and then curve around that corner and then back round the circle again there we go oh. if you've got any pointy bits do cut those off because that's a real giveaway that you've done the cutting I mean that bit's a bit uneven but that's nowhere near as obvious as leaving the points there There we go. And that's also why I say curve as you're going around the corners there. Right, so now I'm going to put my card together. Oops. Once I've tidied myself up again. So first of all, I'm going to use my silver. Okay, so that's not going to show through the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some Tombow on the corners up there and down this bottom half. So this white will be attached to here. Because it will not be attached onto my card base anywhere. So it's got to be really firm on the silver. There we go. So that's going to be good. Now the silver bit is going to be adhered to this bit because I'm going to put some tear and tape on it. Even when I put the um, tear and tape right to the edge, there's no guarantee that I can actually get it to go down to adhere onto the uh, white layer and therefore adhere to my card. 
as long as I've done the Tombow on there, that's fine. It's not going to go anywhere. going to put that on there. In fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my bauble on there first to stop that shine. Um, so let's have some dimensionals. mess about with fiddly ones on the video. I've got plenty more here. Oh and I wanted one little one on there as well. There we go. Let's bring my little pot over. I was looking at the colours to use today. Um, I picked out all the light colours I could find and um, it's very unusual for me to pick a yellow so to pick up the so saffron was a real surprise for me but I'm really pleased that I did because I like how that's turned out. I'm not a yellow person whoops I'm not a yellow nor orange person um, but I just thought that uh, it would work well, and I think it has. Right. There we go. That's it. Now I've covered most of that up, so it's not going to be too difficult to get this on without it shining at you. I'm going to do it this way round. When I'm here by myself I can get my head right the way forward. But I'm sure you don't want to see that. so that gets these backings off a lot easier. Oh, of course, it's, uh, it's because there's a silver sheet underneath and that's going in slightly. It's not quite it's, uh, the same size. There we go. Um, let's put that one on there. If you've used just a partial sheet of your silver, I'd put your ribbon round here before you go any further than this. That's it. Right, uh, it's got to go like that. Twist it around. There we go. So then 
the sentiment. In fact, before I do the sentiment, I'm going to do the dots. I did the dots on the yellow one after I put it on the card. Not a good idea, considering it's on dimensionals. But I did manage. I wonder if you remember when we used to have um, the, oh, what did we used to call them? Sheets where we could do the piercing the holes and it would fit round shapes, circles, squares and occasionally we would have them to fit actual die shapes. I used to love those. I'm really sorry to see them go. I suppose I could do that, couldn't I? Do that freehand. Well, there's a thought. I might do that. I might give that a try. Right, this one only needs to have two. Oh. When I first did this, I was playing with this, and I did think about doing maybe a couple of baubles on the front here and then doing the sentiment or I thought about up there what do you think about that I'm not going to do it because I'm not convinced but it's just an idea you might think that that looks good or you might decide that you think I was right to avoid it. Um, just make sure we put this up the right way. Right, just in the centre there. Straightish. So there we go, that's that. And then for the inside, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do the baubles on the inside. I think I probably prefer the one where I did just three. It doesn't really matter which way up this goes, does it? Okay, I mean the options with these are quite numerable really, you could do one in each corner. Um, what did I do? I did that one, that one and that one didn't I? There we go, that's something different. I do with this is a little bit of Tombow. Don't stick it upside down though, whatever you do. Make 
sure it's straight. And then just the diamond teeth and the bow. So on here with the diamond teeth, there's little bumps there, which are really quite obvious now. I'm going to cover them up with the rhinestones. And then three in the center down here. So I start off with one right in the center and then do one either side. That's it. Okay. And then finally my white baker's twine. And I do like to do a double bow and baker's twine with my scissors. Don't know how much I've got here. All right, about 26, 27 inches. If you still got, like me, still got some twine that's on card, so you get that fold in there. Can you see that? Yep. If you take something moist, and just pull that through. It will help straighten those out. I know some people will just <laughs> use their fingers, lick them and then do it. But I'm not sure that's a very good idea if you're sending it out. But each their own. Anyway, what I do is I fold this in half and then do a bunny ear, bunny ear bow. Okay, I want the folded bit quite small. But then I will leave the tails quite long. And I can never get the um, the two sides equal. Um, not equal. One inside the other. They're always on top of each other. But that's okay. I'll bring it up to show you what I mean. You see they're crossing over. It would be nice if I got one completely on the outside, one completely on the inside, but it doesn't happen. And just to adhere this on, just put a little bit of Tombow. Maybe it's going to come out. Oops, too much. Just at the top there. You didn't bring any kitchen roll with you. Oh, let's see if we can get it off with a bit of scrap paper. That was far too much. Oh, that's good. Maybe a bit too much. Let's have a look. And then I put that sitting just on that little line that was heat embossed. And leave that to dry for a little while. And then I like the tail's quite long on this. There we go. Although well, maybe the same length as each other. So there we go. That's today's project. I hope you like it. Um, that's soft sea foam.
that's so saffron and that is balmy blue um, do I have a favorite surprising I rather like the yellow one which is very not me in fact it doesn't look as if I've heat embossed that properly so don't look at that bit but there we go that's how um, I made this card I hope you give it a try many thanks for joining me today if you have any questions please leave them in the box below the video I'm always happy to answer your questions and I love to read your feedback if you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here today there'll be a link to my 24 7 shop in the box below the video if you've enjoyed my video and you'd like to be notified each time I upload a new one please click on the subscribe button and then click the bell and that way you'll get email notification each time I post a new one. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.